So folks, the freakout continues. Old Donnie is in absolute meltdown mode right now as we speak, and it's not getting any better. And it's happening for a couple key reasons. One, the results as they continue to come in and as he continues to absorb them are infuriating and terrifying Old Donnie. But also, he's freaking out because whenever he turns on the TV, whether he's looking at conservatives or moderates or whoever, they are all trashing him right now. We covered that earlier today, but right now, now it's gotten so bad that he is, according to multiple sources, running around Mar-a-Lago and screaming and shouting at everyone, including his own wife, Melania, who he is personally blaming for losing the midterm elections. He is literally blaming his own wife before himself for the fact that he and his MAGA cult took a historic loss. We're going to get to that, but I want to cover all of the things Donald Trump has been watching because he's seen all of the three clips I'm going to show you and they each tear him apart, showing that not only was he rejected last night, but he was the single biggest loser, bar none, in the entire election. Let's start with one of his own staffers. Experts here. And Sarah, let me just begin with you. Sarah Matthews, you were, you worked closely with former President Trump. You were his deputy press secretary until you resigned on January 6th after seeing him not come out and condemn immediately uh, uh, the, the, the violent uh, protesters. So when you see what we just saw and what Harry laid out there, what is your message to Republicans this morning that may that are considering, do we stand by Trump anymore? I think last night was the biggest indicator that Donald Trump should not be the Republican nominee in 2024. He cost Republicans winnable seats by boosting poor quality candidates. I mean, you look at the political environment, you have record inflation, increased fears over crime, um, the worst border crisis in history, an unpopular president, and Republican performance was still underwhelming. And that was in large part due to the candidates that Trump backed, that they weren't up uh, to quality. And so I think that this is lessons learned for Republicans that A, Trump is not a national winner, and B, that candidate quality matters. And we need to um, like look more Remember into that. Months ago now when Mitch McConnell said candidate quality matters. Um so that's somebody that worked for Donald Trump. And you're seeing a lot of this. Former Trump surrogates, former Trump allies, former Trump staffers, a lot of them are saying very directly or sometimes in more coded language that maybe this is time to leave, maybe this is time to step aside, or the people that are more you know, directly anti-Trump now are saying that this is a massive rebuke. This is a huge blow to Trump. It's absolutely a sign that because people are sick and tired of his BS, but also because his political instincts are terrible. He cost his party a win last night. They might ultimately still pick up the House. They might still pick up the Senate. But in any case, if you look at the broad history, if not for Donald Trump and other GOP screw ups, they would have picked up at least two or three or four Senate seats and at least 20, 30, 40 seats in the House. And neither of those things are anywhere near happening. But listen to this, because it's even more delicious mockery of Trump. And he was steaming while watching it. The big news overnight, John Fetterman helps Democrats flip the state of Pennsylvania. The only on the board from either party so far. Other key Senate races remain on call. Georgia and Wisconsin, too close to call. Arizona, Nevada, and Alaska, too early to call. Democrats currently lead the count, 48 seats to 47. Wait, wait a second. I know. Wait a second. Uh, what happened? <laughs> wait. I, I don't understand. Michael Steele, <laughs> you ran a party. I did. <laughs> In all Not your elections. One. I mean, I'm here because of an off-year election. Yeah. They usually even elect people like me, David Fluff, <laughs> in off-year elections. Yeah. I'm serious. There's always a wave. There was a wave in 82 and 86 with Ronald Reagan against Reagan. There was a wave against Barack Obama. Yeah. There's a wave. Well, I don't understand this. It's not Democrats even. are still. Yeah. 
they still have a chance of holding on to the this, Senate? This wasn't even a good ripple. Come I mean, on. This, 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 yeah. There's and not a red wave. It's not a red wave. Maybe a little uh, bit of spotting. The, the that's it. Spotting a good it's puddle terrible. in some corners, that's about the best you're going to get. Not just spray paint. Let's spray paint around. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's hey, Donald Trump. Thought. Hey, Donald Trump. <laughs> he doesn't watch. Meet Boris Johnson. <laughs> I mean, there was really... There was a coronation last night, probably as grand as King Charles III's coronation is going to be in the spring, and it was Ron DeSantis in Florida. Massive victory down there, right? Unfortunately, Donald Trump lost the rest of America. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say this is the end of Donald Trump, but there are a lot of Republicans this morning waking up going, wait a second, Ron DeSantis is winning Miami-Dade outright and winning 20 percentage points in this state historically, while Donald Trump is tweeting, cheering against Republicans. I don't think last night was a good win for Donald. No, it was a bad night for him. It was not a red wave. Don't take our word for it. Lindsey Graham was on NBC last night saying, whoo. This did not go the way we thought it was going to go. This was not a red wave. That's Lindsey Graham saying that. That's one thing. The governor's races that people were concerned about, New York, mm. Kathy right. Hochul held on here, Wisconsin, Ooh. Michigan, where there were election deniers running, they lost there. So election denialism was on the ballot, and it lost overwhelmingly time last and night, time, time and time again. Um, and to your point, Ron DeSantis winning by almost 20 points in Florida. Remaking the map, remaking the Obama coalition, winning, flipping by 20 points from a couple of years ago, Latino voters. It would appear this morning this is Ron DeSantis's party and not oh, Donald Trump's. Yeah, it's not Donald Trump's. I mean, everything Trump touches politically dies. Yeah. Like, I love that. And I love that's in front of a studio audience. A lot of those people are Republicans or former Republicans, and they're right to mock Donald Trump. He didn't just lose the election, as said. He lost America. Like, the, the he never really had America, let's be honest. Because when he won in 2016, it was only because of the Electoral College. He lost by millions. He never really had America. But even the sense that, you know, he was able to build a governing coalition. He was able to, under the rules of the game, win the White House, win the Senate, win in the you know house you know he, now he can't do any of that he lost the presidency he lost the senate he lost the house and he's losing all of those things again even though he's not directly on the ballot and donald trump is screwed in that way and here's one final clip to nail it home before we get into his freak out on his own wife that donald trump was the loser last night crucial midterms in a divided america and look at pennsylvania look at georgia 49 49 in both states i mean here's what i would tell you big picture I can't tell you if the Republicans ultimately are going to win the Senate. They might. I can't tell you if they're likely to win uh, the House. It sure looks like they, they, they could. Uh, but what I can tell you is the biggest loser tonight is Donald Trump. Uh, his candidates, his hand-picked candidates, lost in states Republicans thought they could win. In New Hampshire with Baldick, in Pennsylvania with Mastriano. Uh, the fact that you have uh, his hand-picked candidates for Senate in Pennsylvania, uh, Oz in Georgia, Herschel Walker, you know, both, you know, struggling. Uh, you know, they, again, we, we don't know what the results are there, but these were states Republicans thought they were going to be able to flip. And on the flip side of this, who won tonight on the Republican side? It was Republicans who went up against Donald Trump. It was Brian Kemp uh, in, uh, Georgia. in Georgia yep. winning. It was it was uh, Chris Sununu in New Hampshire, a uh, really tough critic uh, of Trump who didn't have Trump's endorsement, who won handedly. It was Ron DeSantis who didn't have Trump's endorsement and has won by a huge margin uh, in Florida. So uh, the people that stood either opposed to Donald Trump or not with help from Donald Trump have won those that Donald Trump brought to this race uh, have have so far either lost or are losing. So Again, he's the loser for two reasons. One, he lost because his people lost. His strategy, his entire ethos for the GOP was the one they ran with. They ran with the Donald Trump playbook. They didn't run with anybody else's playbook and they lost. They lost. I don't care if they ultimately pick up the house and blah, blah, blah. They lost relative to basically every other midterm in modern American history. It's extremely rare that the party in power only takes such minor losses. And it's almost entirely 
his fault. And this is where the freakout happens. Multiple sources are saying that he is losing it on everybody, of course, except himself. It says here, former President Donald Trump is reportedly fuming over the Republican Party's failure to produce a red wave, but he's not ruling out an announcement about a 2024 presidential campaign. The twice impeached former president's handpicked GOP candidates largely flopped in Tuesday's midterm elections. And Democrats still have an outside shot at maintaining congressional majorities in both chambers, which CNN's Jim Acosta says leaves Trump in his inner circle, pointing fingers at one another. Trump is livid and screaming at everyone after last night's disappointing midterm results for the GOP, according to a Trump advisor, Acosta reported. The advisor went on to claim to slam the former president's handpicked contenders. They were all bad candidates. Candidates matter, the advisor said. And then adding on to it, it says still more reports are coming in about former President Donald Trump's angry reactions to seeing some of his handpicked candidates face defeat during Tuesday's midterm elections. The New York Times' Maggie Haberman chimed in on Twitter with their own dispatch that claimed the twice-impeached former president is now even blaming former First Lady Melania Trump for some of his own poor endorsements. Quote, Trump is indeed furious this morning, particularly about Mehmet Oz, and is blaming everyone who advised him to back Oz, including his wife, describing it as not her best decision, according to people close to him, Haberman writes. And so this is a broken man with a broken scheme he tried to pull it off you know the way he did in 2016 he thought the big lie was a winner but people are sick and tired of him and worst of all for him now there's a ready-made alternative again i'm gonna say this every time i don't want to sound like a broken record none of this is saying desantis is better than trump he may be worse than trump he may be worse than trump because he's just as evil but way more skillful in his evil but it is saying that donald trump simply didn't just lose tonight but there's no one ready to take him on now there's somebody with a sharp knife and an open back and Donald Trump knows it.